Hey, my lovely friends. So I'm sitting in the front porch of my studio again this week and um, it's becoming warmer and warmer here in Australia as we head towards summer. Today's video is going to be all about watercolour inks. So I have acquired a whole bunch of watercolour inks in the last couple of years. I've got so many different brands and I'm going to bring them all out today to create this painting. I just spent a beautiful weekend at a women's festival so I need just needed to come back and ground myself into my art, into my painting once again. And there is no better way to do it than to just play with supplies. Um, this is the painting that we will be doing today. It is of passion flowers or rather just sort of like an abstract version of some passion flowers. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Come, let's dive right into it. All right, so let's start with the brand that I use most often right now and it's, these are the D, uh, Dr. PH Martins and I have two uh, variations of this so this is a DH PH Martins Hydrus and this is Dr. PH Martins Radiant Concentrated Watercolor they're a little bit different and um, uh, what the difference is to me is that well at least what's the difference the di sorry the difference between the two of them this one is uh, light fast meaning it won't fade all right so um, and it is pigment based so basically it's very similar to watercolor it's pigment meaning it's got these fine little powdery bits and then mix it into um, the binder and you know the, the medium and uh, yeah so these hydras are light fast they won't fade but I find them a little bit more opaque and not as vibrant okay but but they're still very vibrant but compared to this one this line here the radiant concentrated watercolor it is more transparent it's more vibrant but it is actually less light fast so if you put it out in the sun in the open it will fade over time and it does fade quite quickly so this is good if you're um, maybe you scan your artwork and you use it digitally but not really great if you want to hang it up or sell your painting um, as original paintings that's important to note okay so what other brands do I have so I have Ecoline here, Ecoline Watercolor. And actually this is the brand that I bought very, and first. And when I used it out of, out of these bottles, I found the color really weirdly dull. Um, and I just didn't vibe with the colors of Ecoline very much. But I am willing to give them a try again and maybe not all colors um, uh, will vibe. And you know, that's just how it is. And maybe I just picked some wrong colors, I'm not sure. But this is Eco Line, and is this light fast or not? I can't remember so much of this. I should look it up. Let me know in the comments if you know whether Eco Line is light fast or not. Don't think it is. I think it's actually similar to the Radiant, as in it is dye based and not pigment based. All right, the next one, the next brand I have is De La Rowney Aquafine, and this I believe is also pigment based, and it, they call it watercolor ink. I have a couple of these. Um, I have one in magenta, one in lemon yellow, and they work fine and I do like it, okay? And then I have these as well, and this is actually acrylic ink. So it is not watercolor ink, it is acrylic ink. Um, the difference is that, well, acrylic is permanent, it doesn't lift off, um, it is, uh, yeah, it's basically acrylic paint but in ink format and then finally I have this one brand and just one color um, which is the Schmincke Aqua Drop I, I do use it and but I honestly haven't really noticed anything special about it yet I only have this one bottle magenta is a color I use a lot so a lot of times when I'm trying out new brands I will buy magenta or some kind of pink because um, I do use it heaps and heaps and heaps all right, so for today, I am going to just do a relaxing painting. And I picked this as my reference photo. These are passion flowers. And I've actually done a video on passion flowers already using the Christy Rice um, paint set. But I'm not going to do the same painting. I'm just going to use this as reference because the colors kind of vibe 
and um, yeah, I'm just basically going to put it in front of me and see how I, you know, how the colors emerge. And how am I going to pick, pick, pick what brand to use in this painting? Um, you know what? I'm just going to go by feel. I'm going to, I'm just going to pick what vibes with me and I'm just going to play. And that's how I play. I don't plan. I don't have color swatching or anything. I'm just going to do it like that. Um, so let's talk palettes for a bit. I want to show you this palette that I have here. And this was my, actually my original ink palette. So I put, and I bought this from a, 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 an art shop in Singapore called Art Friend. All right, so if you look at online, I'll look for it on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below as well. But it's really not very expensive. You can also find pill boxes. I think some artists use like a pill box. But I use this, I put it in here. And the beautiful thing about this is I can uh, put a lid on so that it remains um, quite wet and it doesn't dry up as quickly. And I put a little swatch here to remember what colors what because with um, ink, sometimes it's really hard to tell. However, the truth is I've lost track of what's in here. I don't use it so much. So today, I'm going to put this aside. I'm not going to let this distract me. I'm going to use this palette instead. And this is a um, tear-off palette. It's actually usually uh, used with, uh, by people who use acrylic or even oil, I believe. And you can just tear it off one by one. And I've seen artists use this for inks, particularly an artist that I love. Her name is Catherine Ressinger. Uh, she has classes on Skillshare, which I took before. And she, uh, we're, we're kind of like online friends now as well because she's also a yoga teacher and a floral artist. And we both love very similar things. Uh, go check it out. I'll put her link uh, to a class in the description below on Skillshare and her Instagram. Catherine, if you're watching this video, big shout out. Love you, love your work. All right, let's begin. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's begin. Uh, just as I was saying, I don't know this paint really well, so I'm gonna use it, all right? The Schmincke Aqua Drop, and I'm just gonna drop one drip here. Um, this is the first time I'm painting this way with inks using this palette, so uh, I really, really do not know what this is gonna turn out like. I'm gonna get a green out. This is my Hydra's Set Green. I'm gonna put it down here. And from recollection, I do like this green. I feel it's quite natural. Um, I am also gonna grab this Eco Line green. All right, I'm just gonna just maybe put a little bit here. See how different it is? This, this is way more sort of light and transparent. This is just darker. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna use, gonna grab this pastel rose from Eco Line as well. Okay, let's put it down here. What else, what else, what else? Um, let's grab a yellow. Um, how about this one? My Dela Rowney Aquafine. All right, so I hope you know, seeing me work like this encourages you to not be held back by brands or, you know, supplies. And you can mix and match supplies and it's all about just using what you have, having a lot of fun and, and just going with the flow. I say that now before I see my actual painting, but I might not even like this painting at the end and who knows. I've got a slate blue here by uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant. And maybe, I don't know, maybe let's start with this, shall we? Let's start with this. I've got my size 12 uh, Christy Rice brush. And the paper I'm using today is my 15 by 10 Academy Watercolor Paper Pad, 100% cotton. Everything here is linked in the description below, hopefully. If not, give me a shout in the comments. Crystal, where is the link? All right, so I'm gonna play. And, oh, gorgeous. Maybe grabbing a bit of that. One thing about inks I've discovered, why I found it really tricky, because I haven't gotten used to mixing uh, 
um, inks, mixing colors. And I've been using them straight out of the tube. And we all know that if you use something straight out of the tube, it can be a little bit um, sort of like artificial looking. Okay, so I'm just starting with the first paddly shape. I find that okay, a bit underwhelming to be honest, but I'm just gonna keep going and just using water. I wanna, I wanna make more of a purple, so I'm mixing the slate blue with the pink. slowly creating a bit more depth with a bit more wet on wet going a bit of yellow maybe mixing a little bit of this pastel hmm. adding a bit of the petals there all right feeling the urge now to start with the green I do like that sap green yep this is the sap green and I love how this yellow pastel red is bleeding into it right now just adding a bit of the other green see how that goes very bright dull it down with a bit of purple and back to the green Back to sap green. <sighs> breath in, breath out. All right, I wanna add a color here. Alizarim Crimson. This Hydra's Alizarim Crim Crimson is actually quite magenta-y. I'll see how that looks. And then maybe a scarlet. So I'm looking for more of a warm red right now to add another flower that I'm seeing on the page, which I'm quite um, inspired by. Mm. That's pretty. It's very pretty. Bit of that slate blue. Oh, it's dark. That is dark. Let's pull out. Light and dark, light and dark. That's really what, how we do in watercolor. I'm going a bit off and freestyling a bit now with the leaves. I apologize if it seems really quiet and I'm not um, making too many sort of instructions because I really need this quiet. So I went to this beautiful festival on the weekend. It's called Seven Sisters and it's a woman only festival where there's yoga and meditation, dance, spoken word. Um, you know, topics, workshops about like um, uh, body image and um, uh, empowerment. So I'm feeling really, really like a lot of high energy stuff on the weekend. And I just need to calm my nervous system down a little bit. Uh, with some quiet painting. 
and I'm really grateful that you're on this journey with me. Um, as I drop into flow, I need more of that yellow here. I am actually quite liking this way of painting, just having all my colors out and dripping um, colors that I need in sections and in areas. So what this reference provides me is inspo of colors and shapes and textures. Um, but I'm slowly discovering how I'm able to just um, veer away from just following exactly and discovering how I can paint without following. And this takes time and skill, time and skill. Time and practice, I mean, time and practice. Obviously, skill is a byproduct of time and practice, isn't it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, this festival. It's here in Victoria, about two hours north of Melbourne. And this is my third year visiting and going to this festival. And every year is different. Every year there is something new to take away, take home. Um, and every year I gravitate to different things in this and this year was a lot of spoken word, actually. Um, there wasn't any art, to be honest. There was, a, there was like a live drawing class where you are invited to pose as a model. I missed that one. Um, but yeah, maybe I should offer an arty thing. Okay, so mixing up. a pink to create this flower here. Inks are so different to um, regular watercolor. Uh, and I need to pause and observe the qualities and the aspects of this new medium that I am trying. And uh, there's definitely something that I know I can benefit from. It's a practice for me, a deliberate practice to slow down because I'm not naturally too slow a painter. But it is true, I believe you know, sometimes a lot of the magic happens in pauses and stillness. And if you don't take time to pause, to slow down, you miss a lot of things. And you don't want to miss a thing, don't you? Okay, so I feel like this bit here is very overpowering. Okay, so remember, bring what I used before, Scarlet. So I think I have to create another scarlet moment somewhere, maybe in a smaller aspect to balance that out, the intensity of that one. So, hmm, I don't know, maybe, maybe here I could create some like berry-like. All right, just some hints of a berry, maybe a bit of that. Yeah. All right, and um, so with any kind of floor painting, you want to achieve flow. So I feel like I've got a red, 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 yellow, yellow. So, but also it's important to leave some empty breathing space. So I'm just going to Really pause and consider that for a bit. Just gonna add more green here. I think perhaps 
a different green. Well, like a cool green. So I'm going to mix up a cool green here with slate blue and the green I have. Okay. A really nice diluted. That still feels very warm. Hmm. <laughs> All right, where is that slate blue? There we go. The thing about inks is it's not very easy to lift that color. It's not very, it's not a liftable uh, medium. So. If you want to go light, you probably need to go quite light already in the first go. There we go. I like that. That's a really nice light, transparent, bluish green leaf. <sighs> Pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of that bluish green on this side so it doesn't look completely lopsided okay when I record obviously I can't play music and or anything in the background and I, I can feel sometimes it's a bit quiet but yeah So <laughs> it feels really quiet right now. Um, it's almost Christmas time. We're in November. It's summertime here in Australia. And things are just getting so crazy and intense. I know it sounds odd to a lot of you in the Northern Hemisphere how Christmas in summer. So you can imagine the intensity. It's uh, double double intensity as that craziness of summertime plus the craziness of all the holiday period um, yeah I've got a sale going on on my online shop now I'm selling a couple of my paintings um, do check it out I'll put the link in the description below and for just the next couple of days it will be 20% discount on my shop. I sell original paintings and I also sell a custom wedding bouquet. <coughs> I'm actually going to work on a custom wedding bouquet right after this little warm up with my inks and I will be turning that into a YouTube video so watch out for that one. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going around the painting and just leafing it out, right? <laughs> just adding leaves, adding leaves here and there. Because leaves are a beautiful way to frame your flowers. It's also a way to create, um, create flow, leaves and stems are your flow makers, flow creators. They provide contrast to all of your colorful flowers. And it's just a beautiful, soothing way to gaze. Okay, I'm just, just really stepping back here to look at how the painting is becoming. And I think, you know me, I cannot resist a rainbow bouquet. I feel like I need to add something blue. So I'm just going to get that slate blue again and use it in its pure blue color, but diluted it. And just add, I don't know, these blue dropping berry-like. Um, petals. Don't know what they are. But I'm 
you know, this painting has a couple of colors and it's, it's nice to uh, play, but at the same time, restricting yourself to a few colors on your palette will make the painting nice and cohesive. So if you choose a blue, choose the one blue. If you choose, you know, a pink, choose the one pink. And that really helps. All right, so I'm just putting in details here and there to, um, well, you know, continue enjoying the flow. That's one thing. I don't want this to end so soon. I'm really enjoying myself. And details give paintings, a, you know, depth. Um, maybe just adding a bit of this yellow on top of the blue bits signify kind of a buddy, bud-like thing. Pull back again. <sighs> I think I need one more scarlet moment because this again feels very bright. And I think what it is is the alizarin crimson. That's it. That's the Eliz the Hydra's Elizabeth and Crimson with my Scarlet Radiant there. Boom, boom, boom. And just creating. Just sort of like a, a flower. And a more flower here. Cute, right? Cute, cute, cute. Hmm. And then, I don't know. I, I like what I've done here. So I'm just using about that brown. So I've created a brown using all the colors that were up here, I suppose. And doing a few more of those things. Sort of like a little filler situation. Which brings a bit of neutral neutral color. Um, let's add some stems. So not all of this look like they're floating. This is definitely one of my <laughs> not so hyper hyped up uh, video. It's more of a mellow kind of like easygoing video. All right, let's leave this layer to dry and we'll come back and do some embellishment in a bit. I'm really happy with this painting actually, so I think this second layer detail bit is not going to be too, too much. Just a little bit to accentuate some of the points that we want the viewer to look at. So I have gotten, a, a, no not this one, sorry, sepia. So I, uh, my hydras has a sepia, no, this is not it. <laughs> Where is my sepia? Sepia or sepia? Ah, there it is. Okay, sepia. So I've added some sepia here and I mix in a little bit of a uh, bit of a red, a bit of a green to just get a nice dark color. And I'm using my size 6 silver black velvet round brush. And what I'm going to do is just going to add some details to the center of some of the flowers. So I'm just going to make some stamens and black lines here and um, I find that adding these black de darker details to center of your flowers it, it just anchors everything you know it just lets people's eyes just rest somewhere with the details it's trying to tell people like look here look here I know this painting has a lot going on but just look here and you'll be fine 
you find somewhere the land and some peace. Okay, so um, yeah, just gonna go around all the different flowers and add stamens with lines and dots. And you know, I was painting passion flowers, but these don't really look too much like passion flowers anymore. They're just sort of like generic flowers. Okay, so this one here is just gonna get some dark lines to sort of like show a bit of shadows and then mixing a bit more of that red to just give these long petals a bit of shadow lines as well. Okay. Cool. I've got some orange here and this is a hydrous orange. Uh, mixing a bit of that yellow. So I'm gonna give these flowers here, these yellow ones, a bit of definition between each of the petals. Because why not? Not huge amounts. And then a bit more of that magenta for this fella here. Mm-hmm. Where else? Where else should I put that? Let's put it here, somewhere here. All right, here. Mm. Okay. Um what else? Pull back. Pull back. Okay, I am going to go with a bit more of that dark and add some details into these little, little filler flowers here and there. Okay, okay, I think I'm going to leave the flowers and just turn to the leaves. So mixing my green with that sepia and just creating some definitions for some of the leaves. <sighs> Not all of it, otherwise the whole painting will just look very streaky. Experiment and play. That's a key to, um, you know, reaching your own style, and your own unique touch. Each of us have a different way of holding the brush, a different way of, um, a different dance that we do with our tools. And of course, yes, you know, at the beginning you copy and mimic the artist of which you admire. And I still definitely still do that heaps. But over time, you mix that up with play and experimentation on your own, looking at reference photos, uh, being brave to move away from what you see in the photos and eventually you know you'll be creating original pieces of art pulling back once again and i'm feeling quite happy with it and so i'm just gonna call it um passion flowers with my watercolor inks 
And that's it. That's the painting. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. Um, remember to subscribe to my mailing list if you haven't already. I have a PDF that I call Nine Secrets to Lose Floral. I'd love to share that with you. It's free when you subscribe to my mailing list. All the links are in the description below. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.